Mr. McCray, you claim the defendant led you to believe you fathered her daughter, DeMiracle, for 10 months until she abruptly changed her tune and told you that you are not the dad. You are here to prove what you've always known, that DeMiracle is your baby. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Moore, you say you are positive the plaintiff is not your daughter's biological father. Your husband, Mr. Moore, is, and you plan to prove it today. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. McCray, you haven't seen your daughter in almost a year and a half? That makes you emotional just to see her, Mr. McCray? I haven't seen her in three years. That's my world right now. That's all I've been thinking about. I can't have a good relationship with a female because that's all I think about. My focus is on her. She's so gorgeous. Yes, she is. And the more I look at her, she looks like me. I don't think so. Mr. McCray, until she was 10 months old, you were her... Father. Father. Yes, ma'am. Tell me about that. I changed her, I played with her, I fed her, and I just missed that. I want something that's my own. And she knew that. He did not change her. He never changed the no, baby? No, he did You're not saying... change her because he was like, he's not gonna change no girl. He did not change her. He didn't play with Were her. Were you all in a relationship wow. when, okay. when you got pregnant? No, we had broke up when I got pregnant. Your Honor, I beg to differ. I was at every doctor's appointment except for one. The one I missed because I had to work. But we walked Your Honor, that's a lie. No. When she was pregnant, because... <laughs> That's a lie. When I got pregnant, I told him I did not want him at the hospital or nothing. I told him I don't have nothing to do with him. I was been telling him, like, I worked late on purpose, so I wouldn't be home with him. I don't understand this. You, you say you were avoiding Mr. McCray. Yeah. But he says he was very present. Was he at the hospital? He only was there one doctor's appointment. That was it. I told him I did not want him at the hospital. So, Mr. McCray, what was your understanding of this relationship? She said you broke up when she got pregnant. Were, did you feel like you were in a committed relationship? Yes, we were together for four years. Because, oh. And we met on Facebook. We decided to hook up. First two years, it was good and everything. Then after that, it started getting bad and all that other stuff, catching, cheating, and all that other stuff. I just had to let it go, because last two years, he tried to be a father figure to me, telling me what I should and should not do. I cannot go here, I cannot go there. Her? And, like, one night I worked late, and he was like, where was you at? Hmm. I'm at work. Like, I'm with my client. So you started feeling suffocated in the relationship? Yes. Wow. All right. And so, in your mind, Mr. McCray, did you think this was a good relationship? Like she said, the first two years were amazing. I wanted to be with her for a long time, but we had our ups and downs. When Ms. Moore told you she was pregnant, what happened? Take me back to that day. When she was pregnant and she told me she was pregnant, I just looked, I just looked in shock, like, <gasps> what? Really? Well, were you having sex? Oh, yeah, almost. Were you, were you using protection? Nah. Well, then why were you so shocked? Because <laughs> I was told I was able to have children. You were told you were not able to have children. Yes. Your Honor, okay. um, we did not have sex that much. We really didn't. Like, <laughs> I'm being honest, the four years we've been together, we probably had sex like three, four times, and that's it. Within. Oh. Yes. Okay, well, it only takes once. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, Mr. McCray, you're saying that's not true? Oh, that's not true. Because when she was pregnant, I was pregnant. <laughs> she was getting big, I was getting big. He didn't gain a pound. I, she craved weird food, I craved weird food. Like, we made steak and peanut butter one day. I liked it. I don't like it now. Wow, those are some cravings. So, yeah. Mr. McCray, you felt like you were in step right with Ms. Moore during this pregnancy. Yes, ma'am. I signed the birth certificate. Is that evidence you'd like to present? Yes, Jerome, let yes, me see that, please. I told him not to do it, and he did it anyways after I said I did not want him Wait at a minute. This is... Let me see what this is. This is... A certificate of birth. Yes, he... Child's name, DeMiracle Serenity, Serenity McCray. Father's name, Emmanuel Davis McCray. That's my name. Last my check. And so, you are the legal father listed on this birth certificate. Yes, you're on. At the time you signed this, did you, had a, you had no doubt you were the biological father? I had no doubt. So, Ms. Moore, why is his name listed as the legal father on her birth certificate if you say you knew... He was not the biological because father. Because I was drugged up in the hospital, he had signed the papers. Well, wait a minute. He's at the 
Uh, why is he even at the hospital I told then? him not to come. He said only way he would leave if it's through a body bag or if the police officer come and get him. So I don't understand what's going on here. Now, you're in a relationship. During the window of time when the miracle was conceived, you were in a relationship with we Mr... Was, no, we was broken up. When Miracle was born, we was broken up. Not born, conceived. Conceived, yes. You were in a relationship with Mr. M- McCray. No, when she was conceived, we was broken up. The month of September, when I got pregnant, we was not together. So you told... You, you knew in your mind, you felt like you knew that Mr. McCray was not her biological father. Right. My husband is the father... This is interesting because Mr. McCray arrives at the hospital believing he's the biological father of a child. Yes. You sit there, you wait through the birth. Do you participate in the birth? Yes, I, I no, cut the umbilical cord. You cut the umbilical cord. Yes. Cause I, yeah, he cut it, but he was sitting his, on his side. Well, wait a minute, Ms. Because... Moore. Now, hold on. Because I know... I, wait a minute. I've been a mother in a hospital. Now, if this is not your husband, you weren't married to him, right? And you say you didn't believe he was the biological father of this child. He said he wasn't leaving unless a body bag took him out or security. Right. Well, then why wouldn't you just call security? Because I was already drugged up. They had with epidural in me and everything, so I won't be able to remember anything because I was in so much pain. We were living together. But, but my point is, it sounds Don't like, live. to me, you allowed him to go through this process. You say your husband is this child's father. Why wasn't he at the hospital? Because it, he was what? going through some things what th- the? then and he couldn't really be there. If he w- been there, Emmanuel, w- Mr. McCray would not have been there. And so I Mr. was already McCray, irritated. When he irritated they were with living when? together. So when, when you went into labor and went to the hospital, you all were living together? You and Mr. McCray? Yes. Mm. At what point did you even have a clue that this now husband was a potential biological father? I had no clue till I left Akron, Ohio. Because... He left Akron, Ohio because I put him out and was tired of him. And, but this and... was after DeMiracle was born. She was 10 months old when I left. No, she was three months. When she went to the hospital and she went to have DeMiracle, she was living in, in, with you. No, then, I was living with her. I put him out. And you were ready for him to leave. Yes, and he because would not leave at all. Because at that point, you said in your mind, this is not my child's father. Right. Okay, look at this photo submitted to the court. I mean, this is this beautiful baby, and it looks like she's Have doing the airplane with her daddy. And, and she and... threw up on me after that. <laughs> that is uh, definitely a consequence of the airplane that daddies <laughs> often learn. But it, this is a beautiful picture. Thank you. Now, Ms. Moore, at this time, when this picture was taken, it's had you told picture? Mr. McCray that the miracle was not his biological child? Yeah, I told him he still wasn't leaving. He, he said he had a bond, but he just wanted to be with me, and I do not want to be with him. But how do you even get in? Right. My grandmother. So who took this picture? I don't know. Not me. <laughs> I didn't take it. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Like, it's just crazy how he just could hold a baby that's not his. Well, he thinks it is his because you all were in a relationship during the time when she was conceived and you all were in a relationship pretty much almost to the point she was born. Right. Now, here's another photo. I love that photo. Her cheeks are so fat. So, Ms. Moore... <sighs> How did he get with the miracle again? So, so, so again, somebody yeah, else let, let him, him play on this one, so Just he can get his. Too. Yeah, I did take this picture. I let him get in on this one right here, so he get his stuff, so he could leave. I ain't got nothing of mine. So you let him in the house to get his things. Yes. And but you also let him play with the baby. Yeah, cause he wanted to play, so I was like, go ahead. Like I don't, I really don't want him around her then neither, cause I already knew he wasn't a father. So, I already feel bad for doing this. What was the circumstances surrounding this picture? Do you remember Mr. McCray? How did you get in the house? I was living there. No, he was already out. Did you live in the home during the time after the miracle was born? Yes. You lived in the home with her? Yes. No. How old was the miracle when you got kicked out of the house? She was 10 months old. Yeah. After she kicked me out, she moved the, the other guy in. The day of, she kicked me out. Not the very next day, and the other guy is my husband, and I knew since I was five years old. But I've never seen his face until I got kicked out. Well, I want to see his face now. Jerome, I want to hear from this husband. Okay. Can you please escort him into the courtroom? Sure. Hello, sir. Come on. Have you go stand next to your wife. No. Go ahead and move on the other side of her. Thank you for joining us today. Mr. Moore, do you believe... The miracle is your daughter? Of course, Your Honor. I mean, you can just look at her. I mean, y'all, ain't nobody blind. 
you know, no offense. So, during the time the miracle was conceived, you were aware that she was also in a relationship with Mr. McCray. Yeah, they was living together. That's that, that was their thing. But what I, exactly <laughs> my point? So we're trying to figure out if their thing mm -hmm. produced this beautiful baby. That's what we're trying to figure out. Were you in a relationship with Ms. Moore at the same time? We had a friend. But you were having sex. So you're saying you were also intimate with her during the window of she the time that. The miracle was conceived. That's a nasty. possibility. Actually, me and Jamal actually were seeing somebody else, and when we was like being friends or whatever, I was not with McCray when me and him was hooking up. So your now husband was seeing somebody else, right, at but, the time. That's nasty. But it wasn't. It wasn't like that. Like he was going through his thing, I was going through my thing. So our relationships wasn't good at the time. He broke up with the other girl. Right. And then you all resumed... We, we start... Resumed our... Our Kindle, our relationship back. And it is your testimony yeah. that it's during that five. window of time when the miracle was conceived. Right. How old was the miracle when Mr. Moore... When your husband broke up with the other girl? Three months. So at that point... Did you bring him into her life? Like, did you say at three months old? Yes. But then Mr. McCray was still living in the house with you until she was 10 months old. Yeah, and then I put him out. Like, I kept putting him out. He kept coming back. Like, he would not leave. Look, if you think a child is your biological child, you would be saying, I'm not leaving even my child my, either. Even if my daughter was not there, he would still came. So... At that point, when you got put out, did you have all your things? Nope. I had nothing. I had to come back. With stuff. Actually, uh, oh came, knocked my on TV, my door, and got want. his things. That I didn't want. The TV, and I, I gave want. it to her, and she stopped me herself, and she was like, yeah, that baby is your husband's. Okay. So, Mr. McCray, did your family ever come and tell you, we don't think that's your baby? Yes. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. But that did not sway your belief. Because I know for a fact. I know. I know. Everyone was telling me. People that, people that didn't know me, that people that did know me. I, mean, I don't care what y'all think, because y'all wasn't there when I was there. You don't know what I was going through. So I'm going to believe what I believe. I mean, when you cut a child's umbilical cord, when you are there, the birth of a child, and you think that child is yours, you formed a bond. Whether anybody likes it or not, you formed a bond. Because when the baby was born, I looked, and was like, the baby came out of that? And that's all it wrote. That's all she wrote. Under the law, with your name listed on her birth certificate, you are the legal father. Yes, I which have means legal rights. you have legal rights to see her. You have a legal obligation to mm -hmm. provide for her financially. You b came here and brought this case today to prove you are her biological father, which really can put your entire standing in jeopardy. Because if it's determined today that you are not her biological father, you then leave room for Mr. and Ms. Moore to go to court and have you removed as legal father. Yes, ma'am. But it's important to you to have it established that you are also her biological father. That's why you're here today. Yes. Mr. Moore, what would you like to add? If I write my name, okay, my biological name on a certificate, now, mind you, you said it's supposed to be a mutual agreement, right? I wake up from being on anesthesia, and then I see a whole another man's name, aside from just the fact that the last name that I want her to have of mine, on this piece of paper. Let me say this, Mr. Moore, and it's your wife, and you love her, and I'm glad y'all in a relationship. Okay. But, Ms. Moore, you're not fooling me. I don't know where you were, but I know you were in a relationship when this baby was born. I've been a woman too long. Since... You have not cut the cord on your relationship. She let him cut the cord on the baby. Mm -hmm. And that's really what happened here. Mm -hmm. What was going on is she wasn't sure you were going to leave that woman. Come on. And so... I, sent, I, and oh, hold on. Yeah. She wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. And until she was sure, she led him to the water and let him keep drinking. Mm -hmm. This is clear as day from oh, this seat. Okay. And so, at this point, all we have left to get down to the bottom of this are the results. Jerome, I'm ready for the envelope. <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of McCray versus Moore, Moore, pertaining to whether Mr. McCray or Mr. Moore is the father of two-year-old DeMiracle McCray.
It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Moore. Mm -hmm. He is the biological father. Yes, ma'am. Can you accept that? I can accept it. It hurts. I know. But I gotta move on. She's still pretty to me. She, of course she is. Because I was in foster care. I didn't know my father. I don't even know my dad. He walked in this room right now. And for her to be confused and not knowing who her dad is, and me being there, getting that bond with her, it, it brought a smile to my face. Ms. Nato, you confess you are caught in the middle of two lifelong best friends because you slept with them both and now have no idea which is two-year-old Cameron's biological father. Now, Mr. Santilla, you admit it's taken you two years to mend your broken heart since Ms. Nato revealed to you on Christmas Eve she'd slept with your best friend. Furthermore, you say she then dropped the bomb that he may instead be your son's biological father. That news, you say, has devastated you beyond words. Yes, Your Honor. The best friend and second potential father, Mr. Zara, will be joining us momentarily. Mr. Santilli, now what will you do if today's test results reveal Cameron is your biological child? I'm gonna break down. It's been over a year and a half. I had to convince my four-year-old how he doesn't have a younger brother no more. I had to convince myself that he wasn't my son. Oh, my goodness. So, Ms. Nato, what happened? His grandfather was sick and passing away. And he decided in a text message, he was going to tell me that I was too good for him. We needed to break up, that I needed to focus on me. He was just going to bring me down. And I was mourning in my own way, Your Honor. As much as I tried to stop him, he left anyways. So I continued to go and see his grandfather while he's in the nursing home getting sicker, starting to pass away. The day he passed away was the day his best friend told me that really he had broken up with me for the girl upstairs. Mm. And so this is the best friend you ended up sleeping with. Yes. So how did that happen? The day that he passed away, I was holding his hand. And Tom was standing, Mrs. Zara was standing behind me. And we both just took it hard. It's not easy to watch anybody pass away, never mind somebody you were so close to. So we went out afterwards and we had some drinks. And during this time, when you were going through all of this and mourning your grandfather, you feel like Ms. Nato was intimate with your best friend. I, I had no idea at the time. I but was you, stuck that's by what you believe the whole happened? time. Yes. No. Absolutely not. But at some point... And who did you come to the wake and funeral with? I came with, with him. You ended sure up did. with his... Oh, you came to the funeral with his best friend? Yes, yes I did. After you had slept with him? Yep. So that is during this time. The first time me and Mrs. R slept together was the day he passed away, the day his grandfather passed away. You don't really know who the father is. No, I can't say. You know, I always thought there was a code that you know, if you have a best friend, they don't sleep with your girl or any <laughs> girl you dated. Look, unless it's been years or you get prior approval. We are two consenting adults who are both single well, at the time. Well, you're definitely two but consenting when I, adults. When, no, when I But I'm not... saying, is there, is there any part of you that said, hmm, he just lost a person that meant everything no, to him. No, I'm because his ex. he... Maybe sleeping with his best friend wouldn't be the no, best idea? Absolutely not. Because if I mattered so much to him and it was so important, he wouldn't have left for the girl upstairs. All right, so, Jerome, I think it's time to talk to Mr. Zara. Please escort him in the courtroom. Sir, go ahead and take a seat for me. Outside seat. Going right up here. Watch your step. Come on. Hello, sir. Hi. Hi, Mr. Zara. Thank you for joining us today. I have to ask you, how do you end up sleeping with your best friend's girl? 
First off, when first off, he told me to do it. Away. He told me specifically in his exactly. house, yo, I don't care about this girl. I have another girlfriend. He just sat there and lied oh, and said, so them words never you, left yes, my lips. Yes, they did. I was saying, well, right, yes. You said they were adults let As my brother, you should have known that. It don't matter. How are you going to try to tell me? Yo, you could do it. After everything I did for you. Who am my brother, kid? You should have known better regardless. Regardless. Either way. Regardless. It don't matter, man. So hold on. 16 years I've known you. Well, 16 years. So I broke up with the other girl when she called me and said that she was pregnant. Not I didn't right break away. up with her not like, right oh my, away. yeah, I, I, at right first. Away. Because not at right first, away. at first, first there were rumors going around that you were sleeping with him. So of but course, at first I said the right, kid wasn't mine. Like anybody you would. Said that, like. So hold on, Mr. Santilli, let me ask you this. When you found out Ms. Nato was pregnant. At first, I did not believe the child was mine. No, I denied it to the fullest, yes. Okay. Glad at you first. It. Did you know she no, I did not know, I, I did not know that they were sleeping together. They both he asked it. me at his house. He said, yo, bro, Kayla just told me that you had sex with her. And I denied it. And Kayla came out right on the porch and said, yeah, we did. He's lying to you. And the only reason why I denied it to him was because his grandfather was sick. That was, so, so he sits here and says he had no so, idea. Ho hold on. How, how, how did you say this after my grandfather was sick if you didn't sleep together until my grandfather died? But, oh, that's either what way. I was just how about does, How does say. that even make sense? But either way, even if, even if I did do it before he died, like, it happened. So at what point did you come to believe this child is mine? After a few weeks of both of them After promising months. that the child was mine. Months. Months, months, months of them promising that the kid was mine. I was, was about mine. five or six months pregnant, and he texted me and said that he wanted something to do with the baby and that he wanted to try to be together for him. So during the birth of the child, which one was with I was you? there. Here's a picture of me in the hospital the day he was born. Jerome, let me see that picture. I cut the umbilical cord. I signed the birth certificate. This looks like a beautiful, happy day. Yeah, it was. And all during this time, in this photo at this time, do you know they slept together at no. all? Yes, he does. No, yes, he not. does. Yes, you did. You promised me he was my son. Because I thought so. So, so you believe the child was yours. Did you sign the birth yes, certificate? Yes, I did. When he was first born, everybody said he looked just like Dino. But I wasn't too sure. I just kind of kept my mouth shut because I thought, you know, maybe it's my guilt. I thought it was just me who thought he looked like Tom. And the more people that came out the woodwork, the more people would tell me, you know, he doesn't really look like Dino anymore. He doesn't really look like Dino anymore. And the older he got, the more and more he looked like Tom. If you want to look at this one. Yes, I would like to see that, please. The older he got, his own friend said that he sat there one day with the baby in front of him like this, looking at him, trying to see if he looked like him or not. He knows he has doubts. And so this picture you submitted to the court is a picture of Cameron, Cameron and Mr. And Zara, Mr. When Zara was a baby. as a baby. And they look identical. Not only do they look alike, they act alike. Mr. Zara, when you see this picture, do you believe? Yeah, a little bit. Cameron well, looks like a lot. you? Yeah. So, Mr. Santilli, you developed a bond with this child for Naturally, six months. Yeah. You signed it doesn't the birth matter. certificate? Six months, two weeks, it doesn't matter. I brought him into the world and I was there. Yes, I developed a bond with him. And you signed the birth certificate? Yes, I did. I cut the umbilical cord. How did you finally break the news to Mr. Santilli that... He's gonna tell you that I told him on Christmas Eve, and that's not the truth. That's not the truth? It's not the truth. Okay. We had this discussion weeks before Christmas Eve. That pretty, now, hold on, that is the truth. She didn't just say, he's not yours. She, she, said it, she said it ruthlessly. She said, how do you feel you're holding your best friend's kid, you loser? <laughs> which is why I snapped, what? which is why I snapped, which is what led to my incarceration. It's, it's, that she, she is didn't, not what I said. That's no. exactly what she said. Thank you. Right there. Thank you. She tried to air the dude out. The kid's emotions was already hurt as it was. When you're in jail, you find out stuff better on the street than in jail than you do on the street. Listen. Two days the later, I find out he moved into the house. You left for another girl, Whoa. so I am a single two days adult later. and okay. I can do what I want. So two days after not you went to... Not even the very to... next morning, I'm sorry. The very next morning. So the next morning after you went to jail from this incident... He took up his role as the child's father. This is the first picture of Tom and Cameron together. When I came out and said that, you know, the baby's Tom's, that's what I believe now, and he showed up, it was the day after Christmas Day, and he said, you know, if he's my son, I want to do what I have to do to take care of him. Whoa. That's a beautiful, beautiful little boy. What am I supposed to do?
He thinks that's his dad. He spent sun up to sun down with him for the last year and a half of his life. When he sees pictures of him, he calls him daddy. When he sees pictures of him, he says Dino. These are the exact types of consequences that paternity issues cause. This is it. So, Ms. Nato, right now, who are you with? Neither one of them. Okay. Is Cameron your only child? No. They have another baby together, too. We have a daughter together. Which we? Me and Mrs. Zara, and I have another son. And you're not together? No. What is going on with you? What, what happened that would lead you to be in this position? I don't know. It's a disaster. I truly believe Cameron Soms. And the only reason I even want to do this is because I just need everybody to move on and let the past be the past. Dino shouldn't be responsible for a child that's not his. And Mrs. R needs to know that that's his kid and to give it 110%. And hopefully all the fighting will stop because behind court doors, this is vicious. We do nothing no, but it's fight vicious with in each here. other. It's worse outside. It's way and worse outside. And if it's outside. worse outside, that's, that's no place for a child it's to be in the middle of this. It's back and forth between everybody. So they have friends one day, the next day they hate each other. One day he wants to be with me, the next day I'm stupid. One day he wants to be with me, the next day he hates my guts. Oh, my goodness. So, Mr. Zara, she says, Miss Nato just says, she truly thinks you're Cameron's father. Do you think you are? At first, I didn't, but now, yeah, for many reasons, but, like... What are your reasons? Why every, do you think so? Number one, so? at first, everybody was saying it to me, including his family members, her family members, people I didn't even know, making me feel like if I didn't step up to the plate and do things for him or be a father figure to him, regardless if he's mine or not, for his sake, for all kind of crazy reasons, that I was, like, a... Like, I, 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 was, I was a bad person for it. So, naturally, that's what I started doing trying to take care of him, trying to give her money for this and that, whatever, which it really wasn't much, but I tried. And but then, they love each other now. And then, like, now, I don't know. Everything's all messed up. That's my daughter right there, and they look and exactly alike And they look identical. And when I put Cameron next to my mom, even my friend a couple so of days ago said that... This is Cameron. And a picture of Cameron and... Harry. And Ariella. Ariella. They're identical. And both of them look like Mr. Zara's mom. My mom says the same thing. That's my twin. They act so like... So it's not really so much me, because I look more like my dad. It's my mom that they both look exactly like. And so, really, it was the pressure from other people and from your family that made you yeah, just first, step up to the plate, because you didn't feel in your heart at first Cameron was your child. I, I, not, not that. It was just the fact that me and him were friends. Even if this kid's in jail or not, or, or whatever the case, you should help her out. Wow. Mainly for the fact being that that's your best friend, so even if it's not your kid and it's his, you should still do that. Oh! And when I mean everybody, I mean everybody is telling me to do that. Everybody I know, there was people I don't even know that knew me and knew the whole situation that's explaining to me the same thing. I don't even know who they are. I, I, trust me, it's coming together now, and I'm understanding. I, I needed to get a hold of this mess. It, it, it is... This is a lot, you guys. And Mr. Santilli, I'm looking at your face, and I... Honestly, I feel for you. It, I just want to know so I can move on with my life. I either want to be there or I want to accept it. I've, I've, I've come to realize that it's strong possibility he's not, but reality still hasn't sunk in yet. It's, it's not a fact. It's still up in the air. So un, until I hear... Either way, I'm, I'm going to be upset, whether Tommy's the father or I'm the father. It took me almost a year and a half to stop crying over that baby, and now if he comes out mine, I'm going to have to deal with all that backwards again. If he's not mine, then I'll, I can take it as it is, but it's still going to bother me because now, finally, re reality sinks in. It's, it's been a year and a half, but there's, there's no evidence. There's no proof. There's no facts. It's, it, it's still there. You I could still be the father. He could still yours. be the father. No, I don't, because it's been a year and a half of me telling myself he's not. I ask you all the time if you think he resembles yes, you. Yes, because you a, it no. took me a year and a half. When you, if you would have asked me this nine months, nine months ago, I would have said, yeah, he's still mine. <laughs> I had to explain to my four-year-old why he don't have a little brother no more. While he's crying, Daddy, how come I can't see my little brother no more? 
this was when I came home. He would ask how come he can't see Cameron no more, and I have to explain to him that um, I wasn't Cameron's daddy. We found out who Cameron's real daddy was, and it was Uncle Tommy. Oh. All right. Jerome, I'm ready for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of NATO versus Santilli, Zara, when it comes to two-year-old Cameron Santilli and whether his biological father is Mr. Santilli or Mr. Zara, it has been determined by this court that Cameron's biological father is Mr. Santilli. <laughs> Ms. Nato, you okay? Stand up, sweetie. Talk to me. <laughs> Mr. Santilli? Tears of joy, relief. You don't know? Jerome, maybe help her into the seat if she's not feeling well. Are you okay, sweetie? No, no, you want to sit, sit down? down. Want to sit down or are you okay standing? What are you feeling? Why, why are you... What's wrong? Are you upset, relieved? I didn't think he was his. You didn't think he was his? I really didn't believe that. Mr. Threlkeld, you yeah. have entered this courtroom with a marriage on the brink of divorce. You state that while you were out of the country serving in the military, your wife paraded around town with other men. And she has admitted to cheating multiple times. You claim you are not sure if you are the father of her third child, 18-month-old Liliana, and have asked the court for a paternity test. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Throckel, you yes. say you began exotic dancing to make extra money. Yes, sir. Because Mr. Throckel's military salary was inadequate to live on, and that led to a few indiscretions. You argue that Mr. Throckel treats your daughter, Liliana, differently than your other children, and are hoping today's DNA results will settle the matter once and for all. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Throckel, when yeah. did you first discover uh, that your wife had been unfaithful. Actually, ma'am, um, I was overseas in Afghanistan, and I was at, uh, up in the Northeast, and a soldier of mine came up to me and tapped me on the boot and said, hey, I need to go outside. We need to talk right now. So earlier on in the day, me and him got into some words, so I thought we were going to, you know, settle it. Well, it turns out his wife and my wife were friends, and she had found out that she was actually stripping as we spoke. And um, at the time, you know, I found out about it. I thought, you know, it was all just a hoax. So I went, you know, calmly to the, uh, the internet lounge, got on Facebook and asked her, hey, you know, is, is it true you're doing what I told you I didn't want you doing at all? And she didn't really say anything, honestly. And um, right after I left there, our base actually got attacked. And uh, they actually turned off the internet for three weeks. So I was in the dark for three weeks. And then another two weeks after those three weeks went by, I got transferred to Bagram. And while I was at Bagram, I finally was able to get back online. And I get on Facebook, and there's this some clown on there saying, you know, you know, liking all her skimpy photos. Um, oh, skimpy photos. You know, yeah, was following her. He liked that she was start working at the club. So now I started doing a little bit of research, wondering, you know, who this guy is. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to the phones, and I called her, and I said, hey, you know, I know you're stripping. You know that that you know I could somewhat deal with. You know, tell me about this guy that's going on. And she says, oh, it's nothing. It's just a friend, you know, et cetera. The, the same BS that First every of all, girl we says. we done. He hacked my Facebook. He invaded my privacy. And he looked into out. my stuff, into my messages. So, so that's how he found out. What did he find? There were messages, yes, but. Actually, ma'am, see, she's going to. No. That's already a lie. She actually, I got on there. And on the inbox, <laughs> I see, not... I see. Oh, baby, I can't wait to see you later on tonight. I had a great time with you. I can't wait to see you. know, the last few days we've spent together has been amazing. These are and the messages yes, you're seeing yes, that your wife is entertaining while you're serving your country. Yes, ma'am. She didn't even have the courage or the yes, decency to tell me. No, your friend's husband told me that she was doing what she's doing because she didn't have the decency to say, hey, I'm doing what I so, want to do. Ms. Threlkeld, I'm... What? 
your husband's overseas, serving his country, yes. serving our country, yeah. keeping us all safe. <laughs> what in the world led ask. you to entertain these type of messages on your Facebook? And you've admitted that you've had a few indiscretions. What is going on? First of all, we were done. We were not together. We had a phone conversation, and he had said, we're going to get a divorce, and I'll send you the divorce papers. And then no. we hung up. And let me finish. Uh, what what let had happened me finish. was, when I was at Fenty, we got in a phone argument, like she said, on Skype. And um, I told her, look, if you're going to strip after me and you, I've already gone through the discussion that you're not to do it until I get back, and we might even, we we'll talk about it then. She says... There was reasons why I needed to. Yeah, see, she says she, need, we, she needed the funds to support our family. Overseas, yeah, I was do. making no. $4,000 to $5,000 tax-free a month. Wow. Living in a, four, a $400 room. <laughs> it wasn't rent, even a, that much. Room. Okay, Your Honor, there are expenses when you have kids. Um, the money that was coming in, let's just be real, it wasn't enough to support the kids. And on top wasn't of that... Wasn't enough to support the kids? How? Because I'm going to keep it real. When, five when I, grand a month? I had to tax have free. it mainly. This is what I'm trying to understand. Ms. Throckel, you say you guys were done. Yes. So in other yeah. words, these things that he's finding on your Facebook and these indiscretions you're telling him about, this really shouldn't be an issue because in your mind, you guys, you thought your marriage was over. Stuff as it may yes. be. Yes. Because you all had an argument about you stripping and you yes. hung up. Yes, it's Your Honor. We hung up and we said wow. it was done <laughs> because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. We, let okay. me explain. Okay, let now we're getting to the truth. Okay. You wanted to do what you wanted to exactly. do. Exactly. And why is it that you wanted because to Because we got married too young. Well, I needed to she because... She wanted to be a hooker in no. training well, so she started stripping? Me talk. Well, no, I... No. no. See, this is what I have I'm to do with. asking is because I, I really want to know... always calling me. Well, why I you mean, chose... Stripping. I mean, because you could have just said, I want to go get an extra job at the mall. Okay. I want to be I had in chose, a Ma'am, since, oh, since we've I been together, to since 2008, she hasn't started working until actually about three weeks ago. It's that her is actually first job, time job. Ho hooking or stripping? It's not hooking. You're selling your body for money, hooker. No, it's not. Anyways. Excuse me. Uh, wow. Anyways, to make matters worse, ma'am, when I um, when I actually went out, the day I was supposed to come back home from overseas, we were told before we even got on the plane at, at Fort McCoy, Wisconsin, that there's going to be the color guard, the motorcycles that drive, you know, in front. The news was going to be there. I get there, and not my father, my mother, my wife, like I said, we'll quote that, weren't even there. We get there, you know, they call everybody's names up, everybody's clapping and cheering. They come to my name, and it's just dead quiet. No one was there. So as everybody's getting ready to go home, I'm sitting over there with my bags, and I, uh, I didn't even have a phone yet, so I couldn't even call her. So I'm sitting there under a streetlight, with my, one, my army bag on my one, one side and a suitcase on the other. No, I was waiting in the car for 30 Dave, minutes. Your Honor, he never minute. showed wait, up. Wait, wait, You waited in the car, so when they called his name, he says no one was there to clap or cheer. Did you hear them call his name? We weren't at the airport. We were. I was waiting across from his unit where he told me to wait. And I sat there for 30 minutes waiting. Actually, actually ma'am, two weeks before we came back from overseas, my unit actually sent papers to all the family members back home given the exact address and time and who would be there at the time. So it's not like somebody didn't know or she didn't know where it was at and when it was going to be there. Hell, it was on Channel 5, Channel 8, Channel 7, Channel 14, well, and 11. Did so, she eventually pick you up? Actually, you know, when she picked yes, me up, I did. she came dressed in her clear hooker shoes and this. Hooker shoes? That's one whole outfit? That's a, I think that's a dress is what they call it. I don't know. Yes. She's in clear shoes with money still in them. <laughs> and the okay, that was for decoration. So you come home, Mr. Threlkeld, and your, your wife and your family aren't there. But she eventually does pick you up. So you were there at yes, some point Honor. to get him. Yes, Your Honor. So you're riding down the highway. Yeah, she has her phone. And, um, you know, I was wondering who, because I saw the guy. She hadn't fully admitted that she's been seeing this guy. So I snatched the phone from her, and I started going through it. And as I was looking through it, there was a number that she'd called, like, 13 times. So I called him right back. Mm -hmm. And I, he answers the phone, hey, you know, I said, who is this? Are you, are you the one that's been my wife? He said, yes, yes, I've been. Oh. And, and now her defense, she starts laughing, saying, ha, I knew he was just going to say that. He's just saying that to, to make you mad. And it was ridiculous. I mean, you know, that was just the only So defense. when he calls the guy on the phone, you deny it. Yeah. You say, okay. Your Honor. So we get back to the house, and... Um, 
like throughout the night, I guess she had, she had not gone over there for three or four days or so. Mm -hmm. And um, he texts her and says, you know, I guess I, I figured now who you picked. And so she starts crying. And I said, Excuse why are you me, crying? We were already done and she's like, she's like, well, that would, he was my boyfriend. Do? Why do you care? Why, why would you have a matter? boyfriend if you're married? Paper or no we paper? We weren't. We were done. You had papers? Well, why do we have to have papers to be done? You said it was Cause, over. Because in a marriage. It's called a divorce. Yeah, ho. Oh. So we were done a few days and ago. Just, just a week ago just, we were done. But nothing there. You're still married you went, until you get one. In your mind, this was a mutual decision that you two were finished mm -hmm. and were heading for a divorce. Yes, Your Honor. Until you get home <laughs> and somehow you end up being husband and wife again, don't you? Yes, yes ma'am. We actually Your Honor. had like makeup sex like within minutes of being home. All right. We keep skipping the event or events that led to the conception. Actually, ma'am, uh, of your last child, in which you feel you may or may not be the father. Well, I was Why actually don't you just be quiet? when I was overseas and I found out about her stripping and her cheating. There was a few options that came across my head of how I should deal with it. So when I got back home within those first week or two, we had sex like four or five times a day, and I purposely she doesn't want to hear was that. trying to. So get you pregnant. had it in your mind that if I get my wife pregnant, she'll stop stripping. Roger, because, because that's going to definitely well, what she be tells me, a professional. Like she just said, kind of like how she just said, I'm going to strip and I'm going to do whatever I want because, because that's what we I'm going to do. Done. I said, oh, really? OK, I'll give you a nine-month break on me. I mean, so. Yeah, but so apparently people still want me regardless. Even though you've had this conversation that you're done while you were overseas, you come back and you have in your mind Maybe if I could get her to stop stripping, we could maybe make it work. I yes. get her pregnant. She can stay off the pole and stay in the house. Yes, ma'am. That's in your mind. Yes. But he didn't think about all the other expenses of having a child. The bottom line, Your Honor, is I had to support my children. There are things you need to do regardless. And I knew he wasn't going to get a job when huh. he came back. You asked why we're here for a paternity court. Within three weeks of us being home, she was pregnant. So, I mean, I don't know if it was my devious, messed up head that got, you know, got her pregnant or the dude. Was. So, um, that's, that's the reason, 100%, why we're here. Um, because the truth is, is that even though you had that plan in your mind, that if I get her pregnant, that will be a professional hindrance, But we'll he doesn't say. think about all the other costs that come along with that and responsibilities. But Hence why we have three kids You were now. also sleeping with another man during that same time period. Yes, Am I correct? Honor. Yes. So you didn't know as well? Yes, Your Honor. That's who could correct. be the father? Now, Mr. Thrillco, you asked your wife to take a lie detector test at some point. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Before she came back, I said, look, you know, obviously the path we're going down right now isn't a good one. Either it's a go or no go. So I think for my insecurities, I'd like you to take a lie detector test. And she kept saying, oh, yeah, it's fine. I'll do it. You know, no big deal. Why don't but we when need it comes, a lie when it comes closer to, to, to actually one. doing it, she starts, you know, getting nervous. I could start telling from body language and, you know, tone of her voice. She was getting nervous. We she don't tells need a lie detector out, test. We just need communication. There's no She reason. tells me straight out. What happened? She tells me straight out about the people that she actually cheated on me with. Right after our first daughter, she, she cheated on me with a guy when she was going to cosmetology school. On her way to cosmetology school, she goes to his house. And a little bit before that, he was taking pictures of both of us. And when she went there to go check the photos, she got a tour of the house. And lo and behold, the tour ended at the room. So... So um, you slept with the photographer. Yes, Your Honor, I did. What else did you find out? There was a friend of mine that we've been friends with for a couple years. And when I went to uh, AT, I think it's either, either annual training or drill, she was watching TV next to this one guy. And she started falling asleep. And next thing you okay, know, he look, rolled over look. on her. And she thought okay. it was Your me. Your Honor, when he, <laughs> no. And had sex with him. A mistake in identity. I, I guess. He's about this As tall and ugly. It comes down to the point where I did make a mistake, yes. If but you said, back, it, it, could, you but said a can't. few indiscretions. That's not one mistake. He's controlling. He is verbally abusive, emotionally. He treats my daughter differently than the yeah, other two. Yeah, she's a daddy's two. girl. Well, yeah. that's he because he has explicitly said he doubts that he may or may not be her father. Do you think, honestly, that he is the father of Liliana? It could be a 50-50 chance, honestly. Your Anybody honor. got a quarter? Do you understand that for a man, for any person, that that would be really hard 
to accept. There is a part of me that listens to you both talk and sees that one, if not both of you, maybe still wants to make this work. Are you two interested in trying to see if you could save this marriage? Yes, Your Honor. She answered very she, affirmatively, she, uh, quickly. Uh, How about you, Mr. Threlkel? Are you interested? Yes. I would say yes, but as a guy, I've never really been put in the shoes to where I would have to it's choose yes no. my kid or not. You do or you don't. I mean, there is still a, a baby involved. I mean, you can't just... I'm, I'm not going to take it out on her, even, even if oh, it's a not mine. take it out on Even if it's yet. not I've mine. No, the one I'm going to take it out on years. isn't her. It's the one in the pink shirt. You're so, the one congratulations. You take it out on me all, but, every so, single day. But let's be clear here. There's not you just, just need to get over one, it. There's one baby in question as it relates to the paternity. But you all still have two additional children together. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You're a family. Yes. Yes. So these results are going to affect in some way this family positively or negatively. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. All right. It's time for the results. Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Our results today were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. In the case of Threlkeld versus Threlkeld, in the case of Threlkeld versus Threlkeld, pertaining to one year old Liliana. Mr. Threkel, you are Liliana's father. <laughs> Ms. Threlkel, it seems like you became instantly emotional. Is that relief or is that it's not, it's joy? Really, or I both? mean, it's. All together, I'm happy because I know she's his, so I would like to work on everything. Well, ma'am, there's, there's a reason why, because since the day it's happened, uh, since February 2011 to be exact, when I found out, um, there has not been a day that's gone by that I haven't let her not relive the mistakes she made. Period. I appreciate your honesty. You were owning up to the fact that you would not let the mistake go. You threw it up in her face over and over so for and two over. Years. Two and years. Two years. still stayed. No other person would have stayed. Likewise. What does that tell you both? Looks like we're stuck with each other. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's important today about this news is that the doubt, the fear associated with it is gone now. You know. I see your emotion. What do you feel? You still don't think she well, looks like you, There was times that I actually kind of disowned her. And um, every time she came around me, I called her JB so for other person's true. baby. Um, now that I know that she's not, you know, it's, uh, it's good to know. You know now that you are her father and you've got a lot of making up to do. OK? <laughs> This marriage is the both of yours. Together, you both have to honor it. You both have to respect it. And you both have to will be willing to work on it. Courts adjourned.